hello friends in this video tutorial i will show you how can we use php my admin so first of all i would like to uh, tell you how what is php my admin php my admin is the utility uh, that is available for the management of database database program uh, mysql mysql database program graphically mysql is basically an open source and free software for database management system and we use mysql database for the development of php and java language applications first so how can we use php my admin we have to download and install the xamp basically we can download the xamp and uh, we can use it basically xamp package is uh, for uh, the development of php applications but uh, you can this is the easiest way that you can download and install the xamp uh, start the apache and mysql service how can we start after installing you will get the uh, program xamp control panel and you have to start action under the action you will get the two buttons with a start option we can click on this one and they will be started xamp control panel so after you will get uh, started you have to open your browser and type in the address bar as localhost and press enter uh, i am going to enter the url into my browser when i open this browser it will open the xamp dashboard page at the right top side of there is a link of for php my admin there is a link at the right top so we can click on this one and we will get the XAMPP open page it will open my php my admin screen this is the uh, display of uh, php my admin screen so how can we create database you have to click on the new link at the top of the screen click on this one and uh, what i have to do i am going to create a new database called school db under the create database you have to specify the name of the database and click on create it will create the database after creating the database you have to create the table when you first create the database or you click on the database having no tables it will open the create table screen just like this but if you click on any database that has already having tables in it it will display the list of tables and under the list the link for create table that means uh, if you are talking about any database that are having no tables you will get this screen but if you click on any other database having the different different tables the tables will be listed at the top and create table link will be displayed at the bottom so we will click on my school db database and then here I would like to create the table and the here we have to mention the name of the table I am going to enter the uh, suppose I am going to enter the employee table TBL uh, then we will create any table here we have to specify the number of columns click on go and look at this this is the table name remember one thing at this stage table has not been created after click on the save button here the table will be created but before clicking on the save button we have to specify two things the name of the fields and the data type of the fields suppose the table have columns say employee id employee name and the city so here it will be the data type employee id that will be of numeric so it is integer a name that is the name of the employee will be of varchar type because it contains characters and city is also of varchar type because it is it will contains characters one more thing you have to remember is that the most commonly used data types are listed at the top of the list say int varchar text and uh, date in case of where care we have to specify the maximum number of characters to be entered into the field and in this screen there is a link to add one more co more columns if you want available at the top of the screen so 
you can see if you want to add more columns we have to specify the length really 20 20 and then if we want one more column we can click on add uh, go here we will get the next column I am adding a salary column that will be of integer type there is no need to specify the length and I am going to click on save button it will create my table you can see the EMPTBL has been created and the list of the columns are listed here under the structure so if you want to see how many records are there you have to click on browse and you can see zero rows because we have not entered any data so in order to add new record we have to click on insert insert first field employee ID name city and salary so when we do that employee ID is 101 name is Rajesh and city is New Delhi and the salary is 25,000 click on go and the record has been added one row inserted click on browse and you can see that the record has been added if you want to add more record click on insert again 102 name is Rahul and city is Faridabad and salary is 30,000 click on go and then you can see browse to list all the records insert to add one records 103 I say Ajay Umar city is in Delhi salary is 32,000 click on go <coughs> so that's uh, the next thing is to do is adding the primary key primary key is the constraint basically a rule that is applied on a column in which we want to store unique values why we need primary keys sometimes uh, let us take an example we go to a bank and uh, we are not asked for the name we are asked for the account number because bank uh, bank employee know that uh, and there is a lot of person having the same name but there is no person having the same account number so account number is uh, is a column in which we enter the unique values so account number is considered as a primary key primary key means the main column on the basis of which all the operations like deletion or updation can be done so primary key can be added in the column in the following way one more thing you have to remember that there can be only one primary key in a table so look at this uh, I am going to structure at present if I click on this one and the structure primary click on ok it will add a special key icon on my column name but if I click on primary key of the second column, uh, let us say we want to create it on the another column, it will remove the first and assign to the second. So we need on the employee ID. So we will again do this. So this is the primary key. How can we do that? When we apply a primary key in the table, we will get some new option in my selection area. We will get some new option like editing, copying and deleting we can anytime update or delete the records with the help of edit i want to change the city to noida click on go and the data has been updated if i want to delete any record we have to click on delete it will ask for the confirmation if i click on ok it will delete the record so these are the options that can be used with the primary key so the next thing is providing default values sometimes we want that the new delhi of the city values we don't want to enter uh, again and again the city value must be automatically get by the default uh, well default as a default value so how can we do that in the structure i am going in the city 
column and click on the change in the change we have default option click on as defined and here I will provide the default value that I want New Delhi click on save and look at this one the default value has been done now I want to insert the new record and look at this fine so you can see that we can assign the default values by 102 and Nimesh Kumar and 40,000 click on go and look at this data has been added with the default value so this is the way to provide the default values in the table the next thing is very good is auto increment feature of mysql auto increment is nothing but uh, it allows us to leave a column uh, and it automatically assign the values it will also uh, automatically assign the value to the column and by incrementing values one by one let us say i have uh, i am going to create a new table say student i am going to create a table named student and uh, one field will be roll number second will be name third will be city and fourth will be marks so integer basically roll number is integer type name is where care and this will be of 20 and again city is also a character type where care 20 so we can uh, directly assign the primary key from here also primary key go so this field will be considered as primary key now if you want to assign auto increment you have to click on this one check on this one and this field will be taken as auto increment column now roll number will get the values one by one i am going to save the data look at this we have two tables if i want to say student here extra have auto increment now let us see i am going to insert a new record and i am not going to enter the values in the roll number field i say ravi city is new delhi and marks is 77 click on go and look at this value has been updated but i don't want the value should be started from one then how can we change this incremented value to 101 how can we do that i have to go to the operations and in the operations we will uh, we can see that uh, auto increment value is now 10 uh, sorry 2 so i am going to change it to 102 click on go ignore all okay so let's insert a new record i am going to enter amit by the bad and the mark is 66 click on go and look at this the value has been inserted so now we want to update this one add it i am going to 101 and click on go data updated now it looks better fine now whenever i would like to add a new row i do do not have to specify the value to the roll number field because it is automatically assigned by the php my admin mysql server uh, to the column let's say sima new delhi and 67 click on go and look at this the well is automatically provided by the mysql database so this is the auto increment feature of phpMyAdmin now foreign key when we want to link two tables uh, we have to use foreign keys how can we do this kind of things in this one so first of all let me delete all the tables inside the database this is also a good operation i am going to select my database it will list all my tables I am going to select all those tables that I want to delete with selected I am choosing drop and 
I am specifying yes and it will delete all the tables in my database so let's create one table called course and that have the three columns click on go I would like to add the column say course ID and here course name and here course fees so this is integer type this is course name is var carry type and we will specify the name of the course and auto increment click on no no auto increment no. i am specifying primary key click on go and save now my course table has been created i am going to add some courses say my first course is course id is 10 course name is c programming and course fees is 30,000 click on go insert 20 and the course name is c++ programming and this is uh, uh, course fees is 15,000 and again I am going to enter a new course and the course name is core java programming and uh, the fees will be 18,000 and I am click on go so we have entered three courses now what I want this course ID column will be linked to my next table let's first create my table I am going to add a new table named student in which there is a column roll number there is a column name there is a column city and there is another column called course id uh, let us say c id for course id you have to remember that uh, this must be same as we have specified for that column in my next table i am providing it a primary key click on go varchar type providing the length varchar type and providing the length and click on save now my tables has been created now in order to link my this column to my course id column of the course table we have to go to relation view in my relation view i have to choose my current table column course id and the next table course and it automatically get the column we can save it and the link has been established now whenever i insert the record uh, in this table uh, say i am going to add a roll number 101 of ravi and the city is new delhi now you can see here is the list of all those values that has been added inside my table i'm going to add 20 this has been added to my c++ course record has been added so suppose i am adding one new course in my course table insert and the course is 40 and uh, the name is hibernate and spring and the course fees is uh, 20,000 and click on go and look at the student table I want to add a new record say 102 and the student name is uh, Sunil and the city is uh, New Delhi and look at this the scores id is appearing here click on go and you can see my course has been added so this is how can we uh, link two tables so the next thing is export and import utility this is basically done when we need to take backup and uh, we need to install our database on some another machine so how can we do that first of all create select your database select your database click on export 
nothing to do i am going to exporting the database nothing no need to provide any template name and just click on go and you will see that your sql queries has been stored now what i want to do i am going to drop my database so that i can recover it from this one uh, i am going to click on home here i will get the list of databases and uh, i am going to select my school db database and click on drop this will delete my databases this will delete my database my school db database has been removed now what i have to do i want to reuse this school db database so first of all just create the school db database again you need to create the database just create the database click on the database and then click on import and then click choose file here in my downloads folder you can find out where you have put it school db sql click on open and then click on go when you click on go it will automatically import all the tables and the data inside your database and look at this in my school db all the courses are available in my student table all my students are available that has been added whenever we done uh, we have already shown you that how can we remove the tables and how can we remove the databases thank you very much i hope this video will help you in managing php my admin so that you can fastly manage databases and focus on your programming tricks thank you very much